Welcome back to Will, A Wonderful World. Last time, Alicia got a glow up. Uh, when Zaren, not so much. But today we're looking at neither of them. We're going to Korea. Because Spotty and Gyeongmin has some issues to work out. I, I'm actually really curious what's going to happen here, because when we last left off with Gyeongmin, um, when we last left off with Gyeongmin, uh, he was dealing with Kang Baekya's utter personality. I don't even remember where this is trailing from for Spotty. Oh, it trails from Spotty's first letter where Daddy dies. Well, Daddy doesn't die. But let's let's take a look at, at what's gonna happen with Gyeongpin first. The warehouse now looked like a scene from hell, with bodies lying all over the ground. Lieutenant Kang's eyes were colder than ice. He looked nothing like himself anymore. He turned around slowly and stared at me as if I was only a bug. Yeah, that's a very hollow look for Lieutenant Kang. And <laughs> you can see Gyeongmin's uh, ribbon spear is out already. What had just happened? Was he pulling a prank on me? But he looked entirely serious when he killed Choi Yohan with one blow. Or rather, was this some kind of initiation test? A test that I had to pass to become an official member of Unit 4? My brain was still completely disoriented when my body jumped backward by instinct. There was nothing left in the lieutenant's stare, except deadly menace. It was no prank, nor a test. I could feel that what was standing in front of me at this moment was not a normal human, but a dangerous beast. It was waiting for me to expose my vulnerability, so that he could lunge at me and tear out my throat. We were both standing dead still. We were both staring deep into each other's eyes. And we were both thinking of the best ways to prevail. I didn't have enough confidence. Even at the Shaolin Temple, I'd never faced an opponent like this before. Well, that's new. Shaolin Temple. The temple is located in the Henan province of China. Its name refers to the forest, Lin, of Shaoxi Mountain one of the seven peaks of the Song Mountains. It was first built during the Northern Wei Dynasty in 495 AD, almost 1500 years ago. It is considered a sacred temple by many Chinese Buddhism believers. He does pray to Buddha a lot, doesn't he? During the Cultural Revolution, the temple suffered severe damage and loss. The monks were forcefully evacuated and numerous statues were destroyed. Afterwards, the temple un went under reconstruction and renovation. In the 1980s, the Chinese movie Shaolin Temple, starting Je starring Jet Li, brought the temple back into the mind of the population and ushered in a new era of international fame. Nowadays, the Shaolin Temple has become one of the most popular tourism spots in China. The disciples in the temple, while dedicating their lives to Buddhism, also worked tirelessly in introducing the Chinese traditional martial arts to the world. Disciples graduate from the Shaolin School could receive dual diplomas in both academics and martial arts at multiple levels, such as middle school, high school, even college. Part of me wants to joke that Chiang Kyung Min really is a monkey. It's just Sun Wukong. <laughs> but that's a different thing altogether. Let's continue. Nevertheless, I began to feel something, perhaps because of my training at the temple. I was feeling nothing but growing excitement. 
and I was eager to give it all, give it my all in this fight. It was almost as if I'd been waiting for this day my whole life. It would not do me any good if we kept stalling like this. I decided to at least poke my opponent first. In the world of Kung Fu, speed defines the winner. Lots of dictionary entries today. In the world of Kung Fu, moves can be countered, but speed defines the winner. It is a saying in Kung Fu that means no matter how strong a move is, there is always a counter move to neutralize it. However, only speed can make you sure, make sure you will not be defeated. There are two layers here. One, think so fast that you could come up with a strategy before your opponent. And two, move so fast that you could outpace your opponent as well. In Louis Cha's wuxia novels, power is typically emphasized in battle, with the exception of The Smiling Proud Wanderer, which emphasizes speed instead. Two main characters in this novel, Ling Hu Chong and Dong Fan Bu Bai, represent the two layers of the meaning above respectively. The line also appeared in the Stephen Chow movie Kung Fu Hustle. In the real world, speed also has its very practical application. For instance, Mom, no more money for you! Damn, that shut down. Anyway. Time to fight. He raised a gun. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that speed, all right. I flung my tail out as hard as I could. Are we sure you're not a monkey? I took a shot and flung my tail out from my steed sleeve. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just so amused at it. The tail. <laughs> the spearhead cut through the air with a shimmer, aimed at Lieutenant Hang's right hand, which was holding his gun. But it stopped right before the lieutenant. Lieutenant Kang's hand clenched into a fist and he slowly lowered it. He was holding my tail firmly in his hand. Despite having been cut by the spear tip, blood was dripping down from his wrist. Behind his fist, his eyes were staring at me with nothing but contempt. No one had been able to stop my tail with their bare hands before. At this point, I had no choice but to drop my weapon. But Lieutenant Kang had finally seen his chance. He sprinted at me, still holding my tail in his left hand and the gun in his right. Then I heard a gunshot before I sank into an infinite darkness, filled with nothing but regret. A few weeks later, I woke up in the ICU of Busan Mus Metropolitan Hospital. I was incredibly lucky to survive the shot to my head. However, the bullet was lodged inside my skull in a delicate spot, so the doctors couldn't take it out. As a result, I had to endure occasional migraines for the rest of my life. With my health condition, I thought that I would be reassigned to some boring post like the archives. But I didn't expect that they would ask me to resign. The police paid me a lot of money's compensation, but that was not what I had wanted. I wanted to be a police officer! How could everything turn out like this? I was going to remark that that wasn't quite so bad after all, but... <sighs> Gyeongmin really wants to be a cop. Also, I... <sighs> because it keeps referencing Tail, I see why it's tied with Spotty. So let's go see Spotty. It was the middle of the night. The full moon was high up in the sky. A group of cats were gathering at the empty lot near the street. There were both house cats and stray cats. They formed a circle around the big empty pipe in the center of the lot. <laughs> Look at this cat just chowing away on a meeting snack. 
On top of the kite sat a fat black cat. He was giving his usual speech. It was unsurprisingly about how humans like pet dogs and what we should do to make the humans like us more. Those two-legged walkie monkeys only considered dogs to be smarter than cats because the dogs would fetch newspapers for them. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Is that Spotty? But the trope was the opposite. Why should we bother to beg for the stupid humans, who couldn't even tell that cats were smarter than dogs, to like us? I turned... It is body. I turned the dead sparrow in front of me around, making sure that there was nothing edible left. No matter how many times I had tried it, the taste of the organs was still disgusting to me. Yuck! I peeked out a puddle of yellow liquid. A couple of house cats nearby sprinted away from me. Pussies. Blackie, the fat black cat, kept rambling on with his pouring and pointless speech. I was picking my teeth with my claws. Suddenly, I felt a chill in the air. It was already late autumn. Soon it would be the worst season for us stray cats. I was one year old now, almost 20 in human years, so I was fairly strong. Still, lots of homeless cats had died at my age. Instead of wasting my time figuring out how to please those monkeys, I'd rather be preparing for the winter. That pipe seemed like a good place to use a shelter. I walked towards Blackie and jumped up to the pipe. Every shining eye stared at me, including Blackie's. He completely forgot what he was talking about. Excuse me. May I lie down here for a bit? You can keep going. You thought I would say that? <sniffs> Winner takes all. The loser loses it all. And I, Spotty, wanted it all. I stared at Blackie and puffed up my fur. That's right. Overwhelming my opponent was the way I do it. He raised a dried salted fish. I spat on his face. Blackie was surprised by my spit. Yep. <laughs> that sound effect. But he immediately swung the salted fish and hit my face with it. He used it as like a glove. This enormous piece of dried salted fish represented unquestionable authority. Whoever had the dried salted fish was the leader of the cats. Furthermore, Whoever was attacked by the dried salted fish, which right now meant me, would be considered the public enemy of the entire cat clan. A dozen cats sprung at me, biting my ears, clawing my paws, stepping on my back. Humans had a saying. Two fists were no match for four hands. And I was facing forty claws. Ouch. Ouch. Ouchie. You, you could just not go to the stupid meeting. I'm still very amused at like the image of, of slapping a cat in the face with a dried fish. But let's go ahead and give Spotty it all. Wait. Yeah, what what why why is the dried fish in the gun? <laughs> Why does a cat have a gun? We're gonna give a cat a gun. We're gonna give a cat a gun. Anyway. Hmm. A piece of dried fish and a gun. I think I could come up with something funny here. But... Can I really just switch them like this? How could a cat be holding a gun? Oh, a cat's gonna be holding a gun. Of course. That's what our power is. No matter what, 
events will unfold exactly according to your arrangement of the text. Even if it's something ridiculous or supernatural, it is still within the realm of the reasonable for us. This is how we were able to help Jimmy's class win the relay race. Ah, yes. Because there's no way Jimmy could possibly do anything athletic. All we did was switch Jimmy from the last leg to the third leg, remember? Oh, is that what we did? Oh yeah, that is what we did. As long as the internal logic of the story is not self-contradictory, there won't be any problems. In this case, what kind of logic shall we consider self-contradictory? For example, earlier we discussed that after someone fainted or even died, he or she would not be able to perform additional actions. Maybe they, they may also. Therefore, any additional actions after a piece where the subject passes out or worse would automatically disappear. Okay... I think I've got it. Well, first off, the cat's getting a gun! The cat's getting a gun! And and then we'll we'll just also like has Spotty fling their tail out. Cause G Gilman's not gonna fight against a dried salted fish, right? <laughs> Cat gun. Cat gun. That's really all that matters here, the cat gun. Oh no, the dried salted fish is being used as like a throwing weapon. <laughs> a dried salted fish flew out of his right hand, charging towards me like a flash of light. Wait. A salted fish? I quickly moved aside and dodged it. Well, now that you've missed your chance, it's my turn. Hmm? I suddenly realized that my right hand was tangled up. I looked back and saw that something had pinned the ribbon of my tail to the wall. It was a dried salted fish that I just dodged. <laughs> it was really used as like a throwing knife. He had done it on purpose. Well, to be able to pin my ribbon with just a dried salted fish? What amazing power and accuracy he had. I hesitated for a split second. I had exposed myself. Before I could turn back again, a shadow had fallen over me. Then I felt a heavy punch. I... lost. <laughs> Am I really gonna read this? I'm really gonna read this. Blackie was surprised by my spit. He then aimed a gun at me and pulled the trigger. Yeah. Wait, why did he have a gun? <laughs> An enormous sound echoed across the lot. A few windows in the nearby neighborhood lit up. All the cats were scared shitless. They were all paralyzed where they stood. And the lot was suddenly filled with the filthy smell of urine. I left the lot and felt my own ears, realizing that one of them had a hole in it. I thought to myself, perhaps I should go and get a gun too? <laughs> Cat gun! Okay. Um, let's, let's give Gyeongmin a weapon. But. <laughs> uh, I, 
I feel like Gilman really wouldn't spit at, at Lieutenant Kong, but let's see if that changes anything. Because leaving the spit on the on, on the face won't really do anything here. I don't think it'll really change anything here. He raised the gun. The cat raised the gun. Okay, Gilman does. My spit flew into his eyes and temporarily blinded him. I thought I had the upper hand, but... Lieutenant Kong swiftly held up his left hand based on nothing but his hearing. I had flung my tail towards him, hoping that I could land a surprise attack. But it was stopped by his bare hand, which was holding the spearhead firmly in front of him. No one had been able to stop my tail with their bare hands before. At this point, I had no choice but to drop my weapon. Lieutenant Kong finally sees his chance. Sprint oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. But Lieutenant Kong had finally seen his chance. He sprinted towards me, still holding my tail in his left hand and a dried salted fish in his right. He raised the fish high up in the air and slapped it down on my face as if it was a hammer. After a loud and crisp slap, I fell to the ground with a fish-shaped mark on my face, and my consciousness began to drift away. I... lost. Meow? A, a gun? Although I had no idea where Blackie even got a gun from, I didn't believe that he had the guts to pull the trigger. I kept staring at Blackie, trying to scare him off. He was staring right back at me. How do cats even pull the trigger of a gun? Can can their paws like fit in there? We're, we're, we're just in the middle of like a cat stare off. The sun had come out. All of the spectating cats had fallen asleep a long time ago. But Blackie was still staring at me. His eyes were wide open, and he had tired black bags around them. How could I tell that he had black bags around his eyes? I just could. Shut up. Finally, I gave up. I couldn't hold it in any longer. I needed to pee. This was a big country. I was sure that I could always find another big, empty pipe. An emptier, bigger, and better pipe, no less. Okay, I am pretty sure that anything involving a best ending would, would not have a cat holding a gun. So, no more cat guns. Um... I am going to move the spit, because we've seen that the spit will blind. Uh, he, he spits to blind Lieutenant Kong. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have Spotty attack a little there. Before... Before he gets hit with the dried salted fish. My spit flew into his eyes and temporarily blinded him. I thought I had the upper hand, but... Lieutenant Kong swiftly held up his right hand in my direction based on nothing but his hearing. Last time it was the left hand. He fired multiple shots in less than a second. Oh, that's right. The right hand has the gun. Has the weapon, so in this case it's a gun. Before it was a fish. No matter how good I was, I couldn't dodge the barrage of bullets. I... lost. I slammed my tail on the pipe. Bang! It was my battle cry. To his credit, Blackie was indeed an experienced alpha. He only hesitated for an instant, 
and then swallowed the dried salted fish and hit my face with it. Enormous piece of dried salted fish is unquestionable authority. Uh, and now Swati is the public enemy of the cats. Okay. So that was bad. Oh look, hints are available. Let's take a quick look at the history. Um... Okay, I've got an A for both of them. And... In A... <laughs> when I hit the A, they... They had the improbable weapons. And I'm beginning to wonder if maybe that's what I want to get the best ending. But... But there's no possible way, right? Th th have I done this variation before? Uh, where Youngman spits on the face? And there's a fish. No. No, I haven't. I, I Oh, there's a gun. Wait, then I have. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That, that, it... it <laughs> Here we are. There we go. I, I can't bring it down, right? Yeah, there's nothing below. <laughs> oh, if, if it really leads to the best ending to have the cat have a gun. Okay then. I slammed my tail on the pipe. Bang! It was my battle cry. Blackie was in shock. This was probably the first time any cat had ever challenged him. He nervously pulled the trigger. How does a cat pull a gun trigger? Yeah. Wait, why did we have a gun? My question's still not answered here, game. He has a gun because the god gave it him. Hi, th that god is me. But... But how does the cat pull the trigger? <laughs> An enormous sound echo across the lot. A few windows in the nearby neighborhood lit up. The cats scattered as fast as they could, including Blackie. Only I was still sitting on top of the pipe in the empty lot. And my urine was dripping down from the pipe. In any case, this was my territory now. That definitely seems like a <laughs> like our best ending. <laughs> My spit flew into his eyes and temporarily blinded him. I thought I had the upper hand, but Lieutenant Kong swiftly took a swing at me with his right hand based on nothing but his hearing. He wasn't an easy opponent, that was for sure. A dried salt of fish flew out of his right hand charging towards me like a flash of light. Wait, a salt fish? I quickly moved aside and dodged it. Thank goodness it was just a dried salt fish. Well, now that you've missed your chance, it's my turn! I stomped on the ground and sprinted forward. I tightened my back muscles and rotated my shoulder, then swung my arm with my shoulder, and finally punched him with my fist. Attack number three! Thunderball punch! I hit Lieutenant Kong straight in his chest. He flew backwards and slammed into a pillar. Finally, I could tell that he would be dreaming about Buddha for a while. I wiped the sweat off my face and let out a long breath. I had avoided hitting the Lieutenant's critical spots with the punch earlier so knew he should be okay. But what kind of person was he? 
I never realized that I would witness not one, but two masters in the Busan police precinct today. The custodian from the armory and Lieutenant Kung. How interesting. I suppose it wouldn't be too bad to stay in Unit 4 then. I'd love to spar with the Lieutenant in the future. Oh, shit. <laughs> so it really was the best ending to give them the improbable weapons. Um, Lieutenant Kung is probably not going to be too happy to spar with... to spar with Chang Yo Min. Um, meanwhile, as for Spotty, I mean... Urine's just how you mark your territory, right? That that's a thing? Yeah? <laughs> but we did get their best endings. Uh took a little more effort than it did for for this case with Alicia. And we have another letter. Oh, so let's see who we'll be looking at next time. Natasha, how about you? Oh. No, no, we, we've apparently just got a lot of time with, to spend with Young Min. We spent all this time without him. So now Young Min's just taken back. Control of the spotlight again. So next time, we're gonna see what is Young Min's fault. For now. Remember that anything can happen, including a cat firing a gun. We'll see you next time.